Say hi. Say hi. I'm going to do a podcast. Are you going to help me? <laughs> Are you going to be a pill? Oh, now everybody can see my dirty house. <laughs> yeah, were you outside? You were. Okay. Well, we're going to do a podcast. So, are you going to help or are you going to hinder? <laughs> huh? Oh, I'm just going to lay by your bed with your toys. Yeah. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Diva S. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome. Welcome back to everybody who's been here before and welcome to new viewers. And very, very welcome to the new subscribers that I've gotten lately. And thank you everyone who's commented and messaged me. I really, really appreciate it. That's the fun part. That's why I do this, to be part of the community. Anyway... <clears throat> I've been sick. <laughs> I, I went on vacation and then I came home and was sick. So it's been three weeks, I think, since I podcast. I podcast right before I went to um, visit the kids in Florida. Well, before, right before I went to visit my mother, if you saw on Instagram, I did have to put the um, side panels on her thing. I said, oh, I did them 32. She says, oh, Barb, I'm up 36. Well, I've added two. <laughs> two inch panels and I guess she's right so now I know she thinks she's a 36 and so does so does the best <sighs> she just seems so tiny to me but apparently my idea of tiny is different than the world I don't know anyway there's a picture of my mom wearing the vest um, in fact I'm doing this on Wednesday March 27th 2019 and I'm planning to go visit them tomorrow and uh, <laughs> my dad called the other day at like 8.30 in the morning. Did I wake you up? He actually didn't, but it, if it had been any other day, he probably would have. Um, he said, oh, can do you want to come on the 27th? I said, is that Thursday? Sure. He said, yeah, because I thought we tried to get tickets for the king and I. The king and I. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, that's like flashback to high school musical. <laughs> but apparently, uh King and I is being put on at one of the main auditoriums at Penn State University. <laughs> I have to think it's some kind of a professional performance. It's not community theater. They have a different theater for that. So anyway, so I'm going to the King and I tomorrow. <laughs> oh, anyway, so we went to visit the girls and we had, oh, and my son and daughter-in-law. <laughs> Um, in Florida and we had a, a really nice time. I had my birthday while I was down there and Isabel and I did a girls day and we went had we went to the IHOP and had pancakes for breakfast and then we did a little shopping and then we had a mani pedi and then what else did we do? Oh, we went for a swim in the pool at the hotel. And then we went for ice cream. So we had a beautiful, wonderful day for my birthday, which was nice. And uh, got to spend a lot of time with her. Not as much with Sammy because we didn't take, she went to school every day. And, um, Isabel was off for her spring break, although they didn't need us. I mean, they have after school care for her now that is, uh, Allison is working. And the after school had an all day program she could have been in. Although she didn't enjoy the all day program, but she didn't like it when her mother and her sister left and left her with us. So she was grumpy every morning. <sighs> Five and a half. What are you going to do? She's in kindergarten. So, but we had a wonderful visit. Um, but it, it felt too long. We were down there. We got there on Friday. And we left a week later on Sunday. So it was a long visit. It was too long. So now we know. Pearl is a wonderful traveler. She, you wouldn't even know she was in the car. She just lays back there. And she is a sweet dog. She's a very sweet dog. And she is still rascally. She's still still taking my stuff outside, but she's no longer chewing it. So now you can just go rescue the phone, and it's not in 47 pieces. <laughs> Doesn't mean I don't have to be vigilant. I do. 
But she's a great traveler, and we had a lot of fun with her on our trip, so that's good. So we got home, and I immediately got sick. I have no idea what kind of bug I had. <clears throat> By So today's Wednesday. So, yeah. I may sound a little croaky, because it all was right here. Well, you don't need all the information. Most of it was right here. <laughs> but my throat was so sore that I finally went on Saturday afternoon, of course, right after my doctor's office closed. I was like, I gotta, I could have strep. I, I kept saying, you can't be strep because I don't have a fever. And finally my mother-in-law said, oh, you can have strep without a fever. I'm not sure that's true because I it turns out I didn't have a strep. I took my Medicare, my brand new Medicare card for a trip around the block. I went to a doc in the box and they said I didn't have strep. And three days later, my throat stopped hurting. So I don't think it would have stopped. Anyway, I don't have strep. They tested me. They, you know, swabbed me twice and whatever. I don't have strep and I don't have a sore throat anymore. I still have a little drainage. I, you guys don't care. It's a beautiful day outside. I'm in my breakfast nook or whatever you want to call it between my family room, which is behind me, which is also my living room because the formal living room is Dennis's office. Oh, you're so crooked. And my kitchen, which I could show you easily, <laughs> but I'm not going to. Um, so I'm all lit by natural light here. I've, this is where I did my vlogmases and I did my last podcast here. And I kind of like it because number one, I can just get up and take a shower. Oh, I put my lipstick on that I bought my brand new lipstick. What do you think? Um, I can take my shower and come and do my podcast while Dennis is having his tea in bed. So it's me and Pearl. Which means I can do it earlier in the day and whatever. And the fact is I have to schlep everything upstairs to do my podcast in my um, craft room because everything, all my stuff's down here. Because I don't actually knit in there. It's just a storage room. And it's not any better. I'm not going to go there. Oh, and I have not been very good about my diary. Well, the end of March. My log, shoot, I don't think I've written in it in a week. And the last few times I've written in it, I've been like, oh, what did I do that day? You know? I don't know why I do that. I know I'm not gonna do that every day. Why do, why do I think I will? And why do I feel bad that I'm not? 90% of you out there don't write every day. Why should I feel like I should? I don't know. Anyway, but I might go and put in. I was sick. I was sick. I was sick. I mean, I didn't do anything. I, my throat was so sore I couldn't sleep. And, and I didn't feel like knitting. It was so weird. The only thing I wanted to do was read. So I did. So I've been reading a lot, and I have not been knitting a lot. So there's not a lot to show you. I got my hair done yesterday. It's much redder today. Last time, I guess while I had stopped making one of the ingredient colors of my regular hair color, and so I took the opportunity to try to go a little redder. My my hair dresser is a lovely woman. She's a little conservative, maybe. And I'm just like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. But last time, it, I looked like I had, I was a brunette. And my natural color, well, who's gonna know? My natural color now is gray. But my before gray color was, um, well, when I was a kid, we called it dirty dishwater blonde. <laughs> when they're trying to sell it to you in the store, it's called dark ash blonde. It's not really any version of blonde. It's a light brown. It's, you know, you very rarely see that color on adult women because we all dye our hair because <laughs> it's a terrible color. <laughs> Ooh. I'm having my coffee in my Goldfinch mug from David. So anyway, 
So I went in there yesterday and I said, okay, that was too brown. It looked like I'm a brunette. She said, okay, so you want to brighten it? I said, yes, I do. Now you got I said, do you have a color in mind? She said, yeah. I said, good. Now I want you to turn it up two more notches. <laughs> I said, I want you out of your comfort zone. I, I said, you've got witnesses here. I told you to do it. You know, I just, it doesn't have to be a color in nature. So, this is a color in nature, kind of. It's a real color. I haven't washed it. I, d I did wash my face really well because, of course, my eyebrows, I looked like, what's his name? Groucho Marx. <laughs> and if you don't know who Groucho Marx is, you're quite young. Google him. Very funny. Okay. So, I am wearing my Portage cardigan by Melissa Shashwari. It's got the beautiful cables on the back. It drove me crazy. It took me months to knit. And I knit it out of this really lovely cloudborn yarn that has way too much alpaca to be a sweater. So I'm very concerned that it's going to be all out of shape and everything. So I said, oh, I'm not going to wear it around the house until I take it outside into the world. And I never did, so I haven't worn it. And it's really lovely. So I'm going to be wearing it, and it's going to look like a sad sack. And I don't care. This is, you know, I wear sweaters in the house all winter. Actually, <clears throat> I wear sweaters in the house in the summer, too. We keep our house, well, in the winter we keep it at 66, which is way too cold for me. But in the summer I'm chilly too, uh, and we keep it at 72, so. Obviously these are all Fahrenheit. Okay, let's talk about some knitting. So I went on, on a trip, so I took some trip knitting. But I did not knit very much on my trip. I did, however, start some socks and knit some socks in the car. So I have some socks. And you can see I've started on the heel. I'm doing my favorite heel, which is, and that one got messed up, don't look, is um, Vanilla is the New Black. And... <clears throat> I really like the way that heel fits. I can knit it easily two at a time. I don't have it memorized. Where's my paper? But I have it on a ratty paper. I don't have to, I don't have to print it out every time. This is the pattern. I didn't print. I didn't have pearls sneaking out. I'm trying to see why, but she's got her bone. You can see the fancy ribbed heel which I really like. And this is by Anna Fletcher, A-N-N-E-H Fletcher. I'm gonna be doing some editing because I still have a cough. So this is the pattern. And I... <laughs> and this is the important part here, that little chart. And that tells you, based on your number of stitches, how many. Do look at this one, this one's better. So I still working on that, but this is how far I got. So these are the, so it's this way. So these are the legs. So I'm working on the heel and then I'll work down the toe. This is the yarn that I made my granddaughter's um, sweater out of. You would have seen that a couple of episodes ago. And I do not have a tag in the bag because I'm whatever. But I think it's Flying Goat Farms. And I'm not sure what the colorway is, but I will put it in the show notes and I will maybe put it down there, maybe not. But it'll be in the show notes, but you've seen this yarn a bunch of times. But I really do think it's knitting up really nicely in these socks. Well, it was so pretty in the sweater too. But I had lots of that left over as it turned out. This is... I still have one more skein of this. I bought more than I thought I did, so. <clears throat> may end up in a giveaway because I may be tired of knitting on that yarn. 
but it's very nice yarn. It's Cory, they're Cory Sock, so it's Corydale. So I'm in, very excited to see how that wears. So the other thing that I was knitting while I was down there, I had started this before I left and showed it on the last podcast, I'm quite sure. And this is the Odyssey by Hoki Locatelli. This is the free pattern that she gave to the, to the Ravelry community as thanks for supporting her, which I thought was really lovely. And I am making it out of alpaca. This is the day of alpaca. I love the feel of alpaca. I bought a ton of alpaca when Dennis and I were in Peru. I went crazy. It was ridiculous. And I'm not sure where I was. Oh, what a good podcaster I am. That's where I was <laughs> the last time I podcast, maybe. So I've gone through the first color with the lace pattern, and I put the second color in. And this will be my third color. So it's a three color shawl. I have lots and lots of this yarn. It's Indeceded DK. And I mentioned this before when I went to put it in Ravelry, the only, the only other <clears throat> stashes that had these in all said they got it at the same place I got mine, which is the Indian market in, in Lima. But it's super soft. I did make a shawl for my mother, one of Helen Stewart's shawls. I think it was from her second society and um, I really loved it I don't think my mother uses it very often and she's always cold but she thinks she thinks shawls are for old ladies she's not in her she's 86 <laughs> oh well I don't want to make her think she's an old lady anyway so here's my Odyssey and so I worked on this in the hotel. I worked on the socks in the car and I worked on this on the hotel when I had some knitting time. And I'm enjoying making this and I will enjoy having this. It will be warm and soft and lovely. And thank you, Hohi. That is such a lovely thing to do for the knitting community. And I'm just marking off my rows. I went and marked wrong side right side wrong side right side because <clears throat> it's a garter um shawl so sometimes it's hard to remember which is the right side and which is the wrong side and it's helpful oops i'm sorry i'm jiggling you and last but certainly not least when i got home and um, kind of settled in, I discovered that Stephanie and Rebecca, the lovely mean girls, which is an oxymoron, <laughs> they're not mean, gave me a birthday present. They gave me The Night Shift by Andrea Mowry. Drea Renee Knits, but Andrea Mowry. I had seen this. This is a worsted weight shawl. It's mosaic knitting a worsted weight shawl and I had seen a couple people and they said oh I'm gonna do this in hand spun well I have lots of hand spun that I spun over two years ago because I have done very little spinning in the last two years and I have I've made some things for my hand spun I made a couple hats and I actually made three shawls from my hand spun but, and most of my, a lot of my hand spun is thick, which, you know, i.e. worsted. Not all of it, though. But I'm not letting that stop me. I am making this out of hand spun. So this is really the only thing I've been knitting since I got home a, week, over, a little over a week ago. And this is my night shift. And it looks way better. 
on the camera. I'm actually quite happy with it. When I first started it, I thought, Ugh, you know, I, you know, the, this first section is not my favorite, and it's going to be hanging down. But you know, this takes six, six yarns, <clears throat> and um, the the background yarn in this whole big section is all one yarn. It switches right here. It switches this yarn in these dots becomes the background yarn right here. So the background yarn on all the rest of this is yarn A. So my yarn A started out beige and then it went to dark brown and then it went to a little purpley, not purple, maroon, and then it went to kind of mauve, and then it went to kind of beige, and then it went back to the brownie color, and then, you know, so my colors are all variegated, because I'm, was, when I was doing my spinning, or I was drawn to those colorful, um, you know, fi fibers that had all different colors in it. Now this first yarn, now this is, this is what I have left of that yarn. Now there is no, none of the maroon in this yarn. It was a loop bump. The color was called Marrakesh and I only know that because I found a reference to it. You know, I tried to put my hand spun in Ravelry. Um, I don't know enough about what I'm doing to put things in Ravelry to make sense, but this was actually in Ravelry. And in fact, um, there were a couple of pictures with it on my spindle and I spun this on a drop spindle made out of a CD on a stick that was given to me for free by a um, booth at Maryland Sheep and Wool. And I don't remember who, Um, phone rang. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I bought some fiber at a booth in, at Maryland and I was just excited about trying to spin. And I didn't even have a spindle, I don't think. I'm pretty sure I didn't have a spindle. And she gave me a spindle made out of a clear CD with a, with a stick. I might be able to find a picture. Anyway, <clears throat> so I, this is one of the first yarns that I spun. And it was a loop bump, which I bought at that same Maryland Sheep and Wool. And I really love the colors, the way the colors were together and that big, you know, sort of dark contrasty maroon color in the, in the bump. But it turns out there wasn't a lot of maroon fiber in that bump. And when I was done spinning it, I had like this much with no maroon and I had a small skein that had some maroon in it. So I used the small skein with the maroon in it, plus all the other colors, as my background for color number A, color letter A. So I don't know, I have to look ahead and see if A comes back into play again or not, but <clears throat> I have lots of it left. Now, this is not worsted weight, and this is not well spun. This is way over spun, and it's a little bit like knitting with cord. <laughs> I don't care. I used it for my A. And fun fact, this is the yarn that's in my logo picture. When I went two and a half years ago to come up with a logo picture, this is the logo picture is a picture of my fire in my fireplace and yarn my hand spun yarn and some fiber which is what you know I mean this is not a gorgeous yarn it's not good great colors it's not why I picked it I'm not sure except that I had spun it and I was proud of it and now I'm gonna wear it <laughs> even though it's a little bit <laughs> like a cord but it's gonna be warm so the texture of my night shift is going to be very different 
depending on what the base the you know the base color is right now this is unfortunately this is like the only one I know anything about really <clears throat> this is I think this is my third color this is my third color this is color C I went through um, the pattern and looked to figure out what these colors were. Where was the triangle going to end so that I knew what colors were going there. And the colors I picked to go there are these two. So these two um, yarns. It's very possible that I won't have enough of some of these colors. I have other yarns I can throw in there and I have a beautiful yarn that was um, spun by Juanita that she gave me and I'll put that in if I run out of my own. But you can see there's yellow in there. So this starts out very yellow and then it goes into the fuchsia color. And then this has all different colors. So, and then my third color, fourth color is this color. And this is the color actually that I am using right now. This I am this is all I have left of this but I knit a hat um cowl combo. I'll go get it. I'll put the name of the pattern on the screen cuz I do not remember it but I have a project page for it. But this is the same yarn. <laughs> and it is a combination a hat you can wear it like a hat, like a cowl, you know, just like this. Or it's got a cord here that pulls together and you can just tie that and then you have a hat. So <laughs> I made this a long time ago. Anyway, I never wear it. I never wear it. Although I really like it. I love the way the spiral goes. What? So I should wear it as a cowl. I don't like it as a hat. But I could wear it as a cowl. But look at all those colors. So this is, this is the leftovers from knitting this. <clears throat> all kinds of nice morals in there and stuff. My thought was if I needed more of this. Oops. My setup is wiggly, sorry. That I would take this apart and use it. But now that I'm looking at it, I don't know. I might not do that because I'm kind of liking this. I love the way it looks. And it's a nice warm cowl. So, actually, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to wear this as a cowl. Although maybe not right this minute. <laughs> it's not that warm. Or cold. Oops. Okay. Hold on. Big mistake. Catastrophe averted. <laughs> Put my earring back in. These earrings are aren't they pretty? Um Lorelei Erdo jewelry. She has a website. I think she's on Etsy. She's on um, Instagram as Lorelai Hill Erdo now. She has the Handmade by Lorelai podcast, and she's a jewelry designer as her day job. Anyway, I got those from her. So I'm rethinking my plan of taking this apart because I really love the way it looks. It's been sitting on a shelf, and I haven't looked at it in a long time. So I won't take it apart till after next winter if I... Phone call. <laughs> I don't know, maybe sitting here isn't the best plan I ever had. Now that I've used my Medicare card, I can have a brace. Medicare will pay for it. I don't want a brace. 
anyway. So when I run out of this, which is going to be at the end of this, um, this row, this set of things, I will find another color because I have more yarn. And because everything is so variegated, anyway, all my yarns are very variegated. You're not even going to be able to tell that I changed. It's not going to be obvious. So, so what I'm doing now is this yarn. You can see it started out purple, went to yellow. Now it's back to purple. And this yarn, which is kind of a denim-y colored yarn. That's what I'm using in this section. Then I have... These two, so that's four and five. So we will see, oh, six. And this one, this is the yarn that I used in the beginning that's got the teal in it. So this is B. Well, I'm not sure where that comes in again, but it will, I'm quite sure. So I will find more hand spun if, if uh, this isn't enough, and I'm quite sure it's not going to be enough. The pattern says each of the colors needs 150 yards or something. But um, I didn't have 150 for all of them. Yeah. She uses spin cycle yarns, six colors, 150 yards each. And hers is very pretty. But I'm really loving mine. And thank you so much, ladies. These mean girls, is, they're not mean at all. They're the sweetest things. And they gave me this for my birthday. So this is my birthday knit. So this is all I've knitted in the past week. It might look like enough if I worked a 40-hour job or something. But I, I don't. So it's not much knitting. It is easy knitting. You don't. It doesn't take a lot of brain space. I love mosaic knitting. I've been very interested in doing more mosaic knitting. And so I'm enjoying it. This is what the back looks like. I am not a huge fan of one-sided shawls where, you know, there's an obvious bad side. Not bad, but, you know, but so... I'll be interested to see how big this ends up. I've done, I'm on section six, and it actually only goes up to section nine. So I don't use A again. Oh no, 10, 10 sections, uh, but I don't use A again. And I do use E again, so that is not, I won't have E, I'll have a different E for that. Anyway, you end up with 191 stitches on the needle. So we shall see, but I'm pretty excited about it. Thank you, ladies. And, um... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to take that apart. I'm kind of liking that. That's it for the knitting. I have been feeling so unambitious. Well, I had no energy when I was coughing, and although I've been coughing. <laughs> I'm editing that part out because I love you guys. So anyway, so I'm not using A again. I might use A again. Not that it's that gorgeous, you know, it's not gonna like add any oomph to this. So I might find, use Juanita's yarn or something else. Juanita's is blue and I always, already have a couple blues, so I might go find myself something else. I'm using my bag I got from Darn Yarn MN. Really love this bag. It just, you know, I took it on my trip. It held a lot. Kind of classy looking. You know, you want to be a classy looking. You want to be classy. 
<clears throat> anyway, that's it for the knitting. Not very much to show for three weeks not being on for three weeks of not podcasting, and I am sorry for that. As I said, I've been doing a lot of reading. I've been doing a lot of rereading because when I have no energy, I don't feel like, you know, like I don't even want new information. It's, that's not good. Um, but I do want to, I do really appreciate other podcasters talking to me about books. And many of the books that I've been reading lately have been recommended. So I wanted to recommend some books that I found on my own, I think. I found them on my own. But if I didn't and you heard about this, then I have not succeeded in that. But I read a series, and I think there were three or four, called Finishing School. Um, the series is Finishing School. The first book is Etiquette and Espionage. And it's a young adult, sorry, Rebecca, young adult series, I'm quite sure. But it was very fun, set in England, you know how they all are. This is, um, there are well werewolves and vampires and magic. And it's right at the beginning of sort of, I guess I, I'm not sure, maybe it's like the early 1800s kind of period. It's not, it's not Middle Ages or anything like that. They've got trains and, you know, but it's long dresses kind of stuff. So I would say early 1800s. They didn't have trains in the early 1800s. I don't think. Jane Austen was like 1805. There were no trains. So I would say later, later, anyway. <sighs> um, <clears throat> and it's about a young woman who gets sent to finishing school and the finishing school and her mother thinks she's gone for a finish to be finished. <laughs> and it turns out it's a school for uh, spies and assassins. <laughs> but they get finished too while they're at it. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. It's, you know, kind of very tongue in cheeky and, um, so it's sort of the school adventures of uh, some of these girls. And the school is a, is a dirigible. <laughs> so they float around and I enjoyed it a lot. There were four of them and you know, they have, they have their shenanigans all while they're in school or trying to save the school or trying to save one of the teachers or trying to do all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I enjoyed it. I got the first two out of the library and I bought the second two because I wanted to read them. And so that's my contribution <laughs> to the book, to the book club of the knitting world. If you like that kind of thing, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed them a lot. Um, but I did, you know, I've been reading mysteries. I've been reading the Ian Rutledge mysteries by Charles Todd. I had never read them before. They were written quite a while ago and there are quite a few of them. Um, but he is a uh, a uh, veteran of World War One who comes back to Scotland Yard and you know so he's solving things without all the forensic stuff and stuff and, and they're pretty good although you know I read five or six of them and then I stopped reading them I get that way I it's funny because I get a little turned off you know I see you know number 47 in a series I'm like 47 how you know but on the other hand, when I'm in a series that I really like, I'm like, when's the next one? When, you know, so who knows? I don't know how many of these were written. I read about five of them. I enjoyed them a lot. Um, <clears throat> and I reread a bunch of stuff. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. I don't have a lot of knitting. Being now that I'm feeling better, I gotta watch Pearl because, oh, nope. Because she's coming down. She sneaks down the stairs and then she goes the back way to the back door. And sometimes it's because she's got something in her mouth. <laughs> but not today. Um, I'm hoping now that I'm starting to feel better that I'll get more energy and I'll have more energy for knitting and, and other things too. And I really do want to get out to the studio. I have some things to make for my exchange with Sarah. And... Um, 
and I want to be doing some lamp working. And now that the weather's getting nicer and it's warmer, although yesterday it only got to the high 30s, so it's not so warm. Um, but it's going to be getting warmer, so I'm looking forward to that. When I pictured myself retired, it was, you know, like on a Wednesday morning, like right now, sitting on my deck, knitting, drinking my coffee, playing with my dogs, so I had two at the time. Um, so I'm looking forward to those mornings again. One thing we're doing now, just a reminder, we have our... Um, craft from your stash knit along craft along going on on um i'm doing this with leslie of the not quite enough yarn podcast she and i are are crafting from our stash this year and we are join, asking you to join us and come along for our um knit along I it just occurred to me that this is my last podcast in March and I said that I was going to do a giveaway at the end of March and I will except it's going to be the first podcast of April because I've been sick and I didn't have it together but I will be pulling um, a name from the finished object thread and finished objects qualify if the you owned the yarn in 2018 and you started the project in 2019, then you're crafting from your stash and that counts. So basically, anything you're knitting from or spinning or weaving or crocheting from yarn or fiber that you owned at the end of 2018 qualifies for our, our um, craft along. So it's stash... Cal 2019 um, to put that on Instagram and Leslie has a FO thread and I have an FO thread double dip triple dip anything that works for you is fine with us and be sure and be member of my group and if you're posting in Leslie's um, finished objects thread be a member of her group too and come and chatter. They're the finished object threads are no chat. So um, just put a picture each finished object. And if, for my next podcast, I will be picking a for a prize from the finished object thread. And um, it'll be yarn from my stash because I'm not buying any yarn this year. And I will also pick a um, winner of a excuse me, of a giftable pattern, $10 or less, uh, from the chatter thread. So if you've got a finished object, please post it in the chatter thread as well so people can ooh and ah because they're not allowed to ooh and ah in the um, finished objects thread. So anyway, I just wanted to remind you that we're still sta crafting from our stash and so all the obviously all the yarns I've been showing you are stuff that I have owned actually some of it for many many years <laughs> since I haven't really spun anything for two years since I got Pearl I've been done, done very little spinning so all this spinning is from before Pearl and she just turned two by the way she had her birthday the other day so anyway, just wanted to remind you to come and join us in our craft from your stash um, along. And Leslie and I are very excited about how it's going. There are so many finished objects. Well, we have a lot of stash, you know. That's the... Pearl. Pearl. I'm podcasting. Shush. 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 Pearl says I shouldn't talk about this anymore, so. But anyway, I will be pulling um, next podcast for prizes. I ho I'll stop now. I hope you have lots of time to do the crafting that brings you joy. And thank you so much for joining me, and um, I will see you later.